Welcome to the Pink Lounge. My name is Amy Amigo and I am the founder of the Sparkle Foundation. The Sparkle Foundation focuses on transforming the world one girl at a time. I am your host in the Pink Lounge where we showcase powerful men and women that's influential. They overcame huge challenges in their lives and have been instrumental in changing other people's lives for the better. In the Pink Lounge, we showcase the overcomer. This week, based on Mark 5, verse, uh, chapter 35, Mark chapter 35, verse 35 to 43, we are focusing on the dying generation. So in the next month, we will be doing the dying generation series. G Jairus fell at Jesus' feet and begged, not because he was man, a man of humility or even faith, as the text might suggest. It was merely the behavior of a father desperately, desperate for the life of his child. Jairus wasn't, wasn't sure Jesus can heal his daughter. He said maybe she will be healed and live. He did not say she will be healed and live. Nevertheless, Jesus didn't condemn Jairus. He did not hesitate but went with Jairus freely. Today, we have Bishop Oral Whitaker again to break down the revelation of the dying generation. We welcome Bishop Oral Whitaker again in the Pink Lounge today. So welcome, Bishop, um, once again to the Pink Lounge. Um, I think you've been the person who's been the most in the Pink Lounge <laughs> <laughs> ever since we started. But we thank you, Bishop, we honor you. And um, even for the series that we've been going through, we've learned a lot. There's a lot that has happened outside of the Pink Lounge with regards to the possessed man, the bleeding woman. And now we are going into the dying, dying generation, generation, which I think is very relevant to the current state. Of where we at, especially in our community. So I just want to thank you, Bishop, for being present all the time and for being and being able to steer us into the right direction and showing us the way. So yeah, thank you very much. So thank here. you very much once again. Um, it's not going to be the last time, Bishop. No, definitely uh, I mean, not. I'm not saying because we're ending with a dying generation. It's not going to be the last time that you are here. So Bishop, um, from the very first day that you have been in the Pink Lounge with regards to the possessed man, then we moved over to the um, bleeding woman and now it's the dying generation. Um, can you just give us an update of what you've experienced since the, since we started? Okay. Besides the, the topic itself, uh, it seems like it has sparked a lot of interest, number one, yes. and there's a lot of conversations going around yes. uh, men and women. And I like what is happening because at least now we are beginning to speak about these things yes. uh, we are no longer just overlooking it and just uh, tiptoeing around it mm. but I think um, some in-depth conversations needs to take place platforms proper platforms needs to be set where we can literally uh, regurgitate and re you know speak again about these things yes. However, it's not going to come out nice because mm -hmm. you must know there's a lot of underlying issues yes, that has been yes, there. But eventually it has to be spoken about, it has to be discussed. And I think what I love now is that at least there's an awareness and a conversation taking place about the possessed man, the bleeding woman, and now we're going over to the dying generation. I, I like that, Bishop, because like you said, it's steered a, a lot of conversations yeah. and there's a lot of talking around it yeah. uh, uh, about the specific series that we are currently working up with. And what I love about it is there's a lot of people that gives feedback that say that now that I know what I've heard, right. now I can do introspection, right. I can look at myself as to how I am doing things right. and also how I'm seeing things, both from the man's side as well as the woman's yeah. side. Now the most the interesting part for me as well is now the children, the dying generation. For the past two months, we've been speaking about the possessed men the bleeding woman and how the children is affected, affected through the process. We have come to the last part now, the last part of the series, which is the dying generation. Can you explain to us, Bishop, briefly from your revelation what the dying generation is all about? Okay. When we look at the current youth today, there's a lot of young people um, that has got life ahead of them. Yes. However, um, okay, let's look at the death. There's various kinds of deaths we can be talking about. Literally, in our communities, we, we've been having literal or physical deaths. Yes, yes. And, and that is very worrying at the alarming rate 
I think he's going. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, it's one thing that we should not just overlook, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that also we um, uh, we need to either pray about it because it, it it can lead to a spiritual thing as well. Mm -hmm. However, there's another death that um, is so worrying that it's it doesn't look because we see them physically around, we see them moving, but there's no activity within the community. Mm -hmm. um, the young people don't have zest for life. Yes. They don't have purpose any longer. Um, it's almost like uh, their life is hanging loosely around, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and when you don't have purpose as a young person, anybody else can give you purpose. Most definitely. So what, what worries me about uh, the, this current dying generation mm -hmm. is that uh, when, we, when they speak about purpose, it's more directed to material things. Yes. It's as if now that is the purpose that they are living for. Mm -hmm. As a result now, they are being dragged and enticed by the material things. Um, so as they are misdirected from their original purpose. Yes. So you find that now they are no longer career driven. They are no longer functioning at school. Yes, yes. Because now the whole aim is now wanting to make money. And those who are the heads of controlling they are luring our people from our young people from education yes. luring them from from really living out their life in a godly manner um, youth is no longer function functional young people are no longer active in church because those who are holding the capital has got the voice in their lives so we see them dying morally we see them dying spiritually mm -hmm. but we also see them dying educationally and uh, lack of purpose in life in one of your answers, Bishop, you, you, you wrote um, the dying generation. If there's one thing that we can conclude is that there is a tremendous attack on our youth. It's either they are dying physically, physically just like you said, like saying, yeah. or we see them lose their purpose for life. That's right. We also see them lose their passion for the things of God as they are being derailed. Now, whilst this is happening, there's a blame shift that is taking place, yeah. which is not making things any better, right. but it's getting things worse. Right. Parents are blaming each other. Mm -hmm. Community are blaming parents. Mm -hmm. Parents are blaming the church. And the cycle changes and it repeats itself. All the while the generation is Still dying. Still dying. So, so in the interim, there's a whole lot of things happening to the youth. Yeah. And we are blaming one yeah. another year around. And saying this is the reason why we are at where we are. Yeah. That is the reason why the children is doing what they are doing. Yeah. Yeah. And... and, and like you are saying, Bishop, it's, it's almost like um, the, the younger generation does not understand that the plan and the purpose, or they don't know that God has a plan right. and a purpose right. for their lives. Right. Like you said, they are just focused on the material things. They are focused on the things that is presented to them in front of them right. instead of reaching out and going deeper in the things of God. Right. I, I think the, the, the people that are meant to guide them and to, to guard them, like we said in the, in the answer, we are too preoccupied with discussing around the problem yes. than actually dealing with the problem. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you would have people, uh, community would say, the reason why this child is disobedient is because parents are not doing one, two, three. Yes. And it's not always the case mm -hmm. that children are doing things because parents are not doing, are not doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. You see? And then you have now, but uh, here mm -hmm. uh, or gemeenskap. Uh, so, like I said, while that that nit nitpicking and and backbiting and fighting around, the generation is not being guided. Mm -hmm. So, if we can get to that place where we now look beyond the issues and actually deal with the real issue of what is leading and causing them to die, I think we can reach the first. Place. And the guidance, Bishop, just like yeah, you say, absolutely, and give guidance. Um, so, Bishop, how does one identify a dying generation? Okay. A dying generation, once again, they don't have zest for life. They, they, they just are there. You are just uh, living. You, you, you are just, you You're are just. Existing. I mean, I, I find it so strange. Uh, there was one uh, incident the other day. I, I was watching this young person taking, um, on a sun, sa Sunday afternoon, taking uh, their pudding bowl and just going around, sitting in the street and just sitting there. You know, if you look at nowadays young people, even if even if community decides to have sporting activities, there are those that will just sit there and not want and to not want to act. Yeah. So the the zest for life, the zest for for wanting to 
just to uh, better their life. Mm. Um, they just want to roam around. Sure. Uh, th that's one. Number two, they don't pursue career any longer. Mm. There's, 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 they don't want to move beyond um, uh, or venture into a career that can challenge them. A lot of them are going into safe careers, safe, safe things. So they don't want to venture out into things that will challenge who they are. So um, it's almost like uh, they're too afraid to, to, to go beyond what society has told them they can go beyond. Sure. Um, the, the, fourth, the third thing is that godliness. Uh, there's no sense for godliness. Mm. Um, and, 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 and like I said, nobody is at blame. Sometimes it's the, you know, the things of the spirit and, and why a, a lot of people don't venture into the things of the spirit. The things of the spirit is not naturally nice. Mm. Let's let, we need to be honest. Mm. The things of the spirit is discipline. Yes. So our young people are at this stage where when we look at discipline, we look at discipline as bondage mm. as opposed to guidance. That's why young people will not relate easily to somebody that is guiding, guiding them, them. Mm. Or, or correcting them because correcting looks like bondage because now we are this place where uh, we're in a generation where uh, freedom is the thing. Sure. So uh, that's one sign of a dying generation. We just want to be free without any form of responsibility and guidance and as a result the morality within our young people is dying. It's dying. You mentioned something, Bishop, um, that I think is also one of the biggest things. Um, is that, that this generation, they became so, you know, they like you say, they they lost the zest for life. Yeah. And as Amber so says, life, yeah. it's yeah. challenging for us. They don't want to take it on because they're going to have to work for yeah. it. So it's almost like you don't want to work for something. Yeah. Instead, something must come to you. And as long as it comes easier to you, it yeah. will be fine. It's a sense of entitlement. Yes. There's a generation here, and, and like we said, that, that, that's another sign of, 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 of a dying generation. We feel that we are entitled sure. to this. Just because you are born doesn't mean you are entitled to anything. We all have to work for it. We all have to pursue it. But because of not having that zest, that passion, that zeal, uh, that's what's causing our young generation to die. Yeah. I watched a clip the other day, Bishop, on TV and was reminded, I was reminded of a, a clip that was sent around a few months ago of a young girl saying to her parents, she didn't want to be on this earth. They brought her onto this earth. So now they wanted to do things that she doesn't want to do. Right. Uh, I think that is also part of the entire yeah, Absolutely, like, absolutely. I'm here now, so allow me to do whatever I want to do. Don't you tell me what to do. Absolutely. Sure. So based on the identification, Bishop, of the dying generation, do you think there, um, there is a solution to the dying generation? Absolutely. Is Absolutely. Look, for, uh, I mean, we, we can start with the, with the possessment, there's a solution. Yes. For the bleeding woman, there's a there solution. A solution yes. For the dying generation, there's also a solution. Mm -hmm. um, however, with the solution of the, of the children, is that be, because of our nitpicking, we are not getting to the solution. Sure. Like I said, when we, we the, the parents blaming the society, society you know, a society, we, we are not getting to the solution as long as we are looking at each other as the problem. Sure. So the first thing that we need to, the first solution, the first solution to a dying, dying generation is that the support structures needs to understand each yes. other. Yes. Because children are like this. Especially in the home. If they see mommy and daddy, there's no agreement between mommy and daddy. A child sees an escape. Yeah. So if they can see, the first, the first solution is that whatever support structure, whether it be in home or be in the community or the church, if there's that solid agreement, yes. it can bring the child automatically to alignment. Oh, yes. But if there's disagreement, it's easy for that child to get mm, their way. To get away yeah. with whatever it is. Absolutely. They, what... they go to daddy. Daddy says, no. Go to mommy. Ah, no, man. You know, you can. Yeah. Or vice versa. Vice versa. versa. You know? Same thing. So if, if there's that agreement, not to imprison the children, but if they know that there's an agreement between the parties, they know they won't have the easy way out. Sure. So in Mark 5.22, Bishop, um, Jairus, the father of the daughter, sought after Jesus. Who sought after Jesus? 
now that the man has healed he must place a demand on god to heal the dying generation so we look when we go back to the possessed man the possessed man what god healed when we go back to the bleeding woman she also got healed now that the possessed man was healed automatically his eyes opened to his uh, children right his eyes opened to his child right. and now because my eyes is open i'm the as the father the eyes is open the mother the bible, eyes is open now you can see what is going wrong in absolutely. your children absolutely now automatically you can place a demand on god for your child's uh, life absolutely can we expound more on that bishop you know the cycle from the mother from the father to the mother to the child right right um in, the, in our last insert uh when we dealt with the with the woman we said a healed man leads to a healed woman, woman yes. who wouldn't have to go to so many yes, conferences. conferences yes if parents get to a stage where they are healed their way of dealing with kids or their children will be different mm -hmm. sometimes a father will discipline his kid based out of and the worst thing a parent can do is discipline your kids based out of bitterness yes. because when you discipline that kid you are not imparting healing you are imparting anger mm -hmm. you're imparting frustration and that's why why some of our children have outbursts mm -hmm. and they some of the kids become bullies yes. is because the way we deal with them we deal with them from the platform of who we are yes so if we get to that stage of healing um you will you, whenever you speak to that child you will speak from a platform of healing and the child will pick it up that this it's either done through love mm -hmm. or through concern mm -hmm. or through care yes. or this is done out of anger mm -hmm. and frustration, and frustration. And, and, and so likewise with the woman, you find sometimes with the woman, when we discipline the kids, there's that frustration, that edginess. Mm -hmm. and, and that gets imparted onto the kid, whether it be a boy or whether it be a girl. Mm -hmm. And then later on, these kids develop a pattern thinking that that's the it way to communicate. Right. Yes. That's the way to speak. That's the way it should be done. And, and wherever they go, they will deal with the matter because the first teacher to any child is the parent. The parent is. There's a saying, Bishop, where they say, a child does not do what they are told. A child do what they see. Absolutely. And where do they see? At home. At home, absolutely. They see with either the mother, the father, or both the parents. Absolutely. Whichever parent they find themselves in that process. So, basically, it's the man was healed now. So, the woman also got healed. Now, we need to deal with the children. Right. How are we going to get the children to be healed? It's basically the parents that needs to heal themselves absolutely so that the children can also be healed. Absolutely. also how you speak to speak, your child yeah how do you how do you how do you carry yourself around your child mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that it can be mm -hmm. you know whatever it is you do the child is definitely mm -hmm. going to be and and how you deal with each other as a couple yes as a healed man and a, and a healed woman mm -hmm. how you'll speak to each other also develops a pattern for the child yes because eventually now the child knows the art of communication from the parents mm -hmm. Either if 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 there's still that strife and conflict, the child will know that this is how we speak. We, and, we, yeah, and, and this becomes the and conversation. This becomes the conversation yeah. at home, yes. Yeah. So in your notes, Bishop, you explained how it takes team effort, just like you said now, to deal with the dying generation. It may, it reminds me of the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. We mentioned previously also, it's 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 about. The, the, currently there's this thing of the parent blaming the other parent or mm -hmm. the parent blaming mm -hmm. each other the parent blaming the community Absolutely. the community blaming the church mm -hmm. you know that type of thing so when we look at that statement bishop what do you think about that specific mm -hmm. statement about the village, village raising yeah. the child um looking at the text uh, mark chapter chapter five when jesus uh went into the mm -hmm into the house yeah. it's amazing he didn't go in alone yes i'm the kind of person that whenever i look at a scripture i always ask questions why didn't why? jesus go alone he had all the right to go alone mm -hmm. i mean he's the healer he's yes. the he's the one yes. who restores mm -hmm. so when we look at god when god does things god god can do things all by himself he can heal the community by himself mm -hmm. but he chooses to use human agencies yes. also mm -hmm. He does his work, but he uses human agencies also 
to help in the healing process. Yes, yes. So when Jesus went into the room, which represents God, he took Peter, James, and John, yeah. which are the support structures within our community. Yes. It could be the church, it could be the school, it could be the sporting uh, structure, whatever stakeholder in the community is, they were taken into that room to face that dying generation because this is what we are seeing in the community. So Jesus brought them in. He didn't exclude them from what is about to take place. Mm -hmm. And I think even as, 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 as uh, what we need to understand as, as, as parents, that although you are raising your children, you are, you are the ones that God has entrusted them to you. Mm -hmm. The support structures are also there. It's very important as and, well. And they can equip your children in areas that you don't or una are unable, unable to. to do. Yeah. Because you know this part. The others knows that part. Yes. For example, like the church. We know the spiritual part. We know the other part. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes as parents, if you could leave the church to do that spiritual part. Yes. But because of the nitpicking like we spoke earlier on, mm -hmm. sometimes there's that there's that conflict of roles mm -hmm. where sometimes the church wants to take the parents' role or the parents want to take the church's role and we, have, we are stepping on each other's role and it's causing confusion. Yeah. So yeah. I think once the parents understand that mm, I know this is my kid, yes. I'm confident this is my kid, yeah. the church, the school, and whatever structure is, has been brought into, into the room yeah. to help my kid, let them do what they are able to do. to do. Yes. There's another structure, Bishop, that I think is currently confusing our generation. Um, and it's a very interesting one. It's the one that's taking uh, away the child from the house, from their friends, from everything. It's the fourth industrial revolution. revolution. <laughs> the technology, yeah. Bishop. The yeah. technology yeah. Is, is on another level. Yeah. What do you think about that one, Bishop? Oh, it's, 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 that, that, that's a terrible one. Uh, however, it, 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 as, as terrible as it is, or it looks, mm -hmm. it can be utilized in a positive, in a positive way. way. Look at how we are using technology today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At some point, maybe, uh, um, I think, because we are living, unfortunately, we are living in a generation that is technologically inclined. inclined yes. We cannot move away from that. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, we need to grow wiser. Mm -hmm. How do we utilize what we have today to bring family structures together? Yes, yes. As opposed to now being isolated, one room there, one room there, uh, you on your phone there. But if we could utilize that tool mm -hmm. to bring families together, I, I, I think um, we, can, we can work a way out there to even utilize what seems to be a problem to make it work out for good. Because the Bible says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this cannot be our enemy. We could utilize this tool to bring families together. Just work out patterns and plans. I, I do that with my girls sometimes. Um, um, I know they are young. So I, I utilize that tool instead of it separating the family. We do TikTok videos together yeah, as yeah. a family. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm asking that, Bishop, because I've seen how these children just get carried away yeah. with the TikToks yes, and the Instagrams absolutely. and the Facebooks. Absolutely. And and he, like you said previously, yes, it is our responsibility as parents to bring them back. Yeah. Some parents is not always there. You yeah. know? There's some parents who's at work absolutely. most of the time. They're unable to get their children, you know, to, to get them back to re get to realize, okay, there's time for your phone and there's time where you should let it go. Mm -hmm. There's other, there's also some things that I've seen on, 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 on social media where um, the young children, are be, especially the young girls, they have been carried mm -hmm. away, they have been pulled mm -hmm. and drawn mm -hmm. from this uh, social media pages. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have been drawn with the wrong things. Right. And then they get caught up right. in the wrong things with the social media pages and everything. So we need to look into how do we get, like you said, there is ways to do the right things in it, but there's, there's not all the parents have, you know, the, the, the understanding right. or the knowledge as to how right. we should do yeah. that. Hence, the support structures. Yes. Hence, the importance of the support structures. But if you are the only person that's speaking into your child's life and you are keeping other support structures yeah, out, yes. 
you are at risk because yes. there comes a time you are unable to um, think of it okay yes at some stage as a parent um, you can be the voice in your child's life at some stage maybe or maybe you're a parent that's always actively involved with your child mm -hmm. but it's there's a certain period in your life where now the child grows beyond your voice yes, yes. so if you are the only voice what happens at that stage where your child yes. grows beyond your voice sure. and now he no longer listens to any other voice sure. so it's I think at an early stage and that's what I, I try to do with my my girls as well I try to include as many voices mm. to support my voice yes, so that they will be so used to the other voices and not feel that when the other voices speak so the voice of the church is speaking to them the voice of the teachers is speaking to them the voice of, of whoever I try to include them at a young age so that when they grow older they are so used to those voices but sometimes we have parents that isolates the kids from all other voices and then when they the kid grows beyond the parents voice the parent has no, no voice any longer sure. so bishop in mark 35 the bible says while jesus was saying this some messengers came from messengers came from Jairus' house and told him your daughter has died mm -hmm. why bother the teacher any longer this is exactly the perception of the society right. we have people who can't see the change the change is possible and mocks those who see things differently and tries to bring up, out about change what word of advice can you give people who fail to see the change that is possible for our dying generation? Right. Um, let's 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 bring it first into context. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at Mark chapter five, there there are two groups of people that we see there. Yes. Uh, while Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house, there was the, the the servant of the house that came and brought the bad news. Yes. There's people in society that always wants to bring the bad, the bad news, news. Yes. about your child, about the youth, about yes. the children. It's almost like as if there's nothing that can come right out of anything. Yes. Mm. Um, there are various reasons as to why. Maybe they themselves have been disappointed mm. or whatever. And then there's the, there's the second group that even if there are people trying to do better for the young people, they tend to criticize those who are trying to mm. do better. What, what are they trying? You know, I know. The Tchani Verkne. Ons ons het heiden probeer. Jylle jylle begin met die hokje. Ons wil ons wil sien hoe hoe lang gaan dit. Begin met die netbal. We want to see. We have also there, and we we we've got these groups in society because it's almost like they have given up on the youth. Mm. And the thing is, what we need to understand. Uh, we cannot afford to give up on the youth because if we give up on the youth, we are giving up on our nation. Yes, That's my advice to these people. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing more that I can tell them mm -hmm. because it's either you want to, you, you, you are already handing over your nation to disaster because if we give up on these young people and we don't do anything, and with, with tears in my eyes and really with a passion is that if we don't do anything for our young people now our nation is heading towards a disaster sure in your insights bishop you're speaking about the waking up of leadership yeah. um in mark 5 verse 22 it says jairus the father of the daughter sought for help yeah. from jesus so jairus represents the father in the house mm -hmm. or the leadership in the community, community. can you Maybe just expand on that yeah. one, Bishop. Uh, the reason why I'm asking that is because maybe someone might be confused as to where do we fit in, how do we do that? So, yeah. We, we can commend Ch uh, uh, Jairus. I commend Jairus for running to Jesus. You could see the desperation mm -hmm. of a father. Yes. You could see a desperation of a leader. Someone that recognized that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And because something is wrong, he ran I'm to the I am seeking mm -hmm. for help. However, my concern is when you look at the name Jairus, the name Jairus means enlightened one yes. or the one who wakes up. Yes. My concern is when did Jairus wake up? Jairus only woke up when his daughter was on the verge of dying. Yes. Does it have to take our generation to head towards a disaster for us to wake up? Does it? Does things have to get to a state where it's worse before we get to wake up? Some things, 
And, and it's not to say that Jairus didn't see his daughter was sick. It's not to say that he didn't pick up signs and symptoms. Sometimes we see things in our community and we overlook it. Yes. Sometimes we see things and we, we avoid it because maybe sometimes we're too afraid to be confronted or, 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 or to confront the issue. So we avoid this thing and this thing gets worse. And when it gets worse, then we are trying to seek for help. So I commend him for seeking for help. Yes. But my question is, when did he seek for help? When when things the generation were, uh, was, dying. was busy dying. When his child was right. dying. So I think for us, what we need to do, for the leaders to do, we should not wait for things to happen. Let's 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 let me let me let me just fast forward quickly. We look at David. The Bible says that um, Goliath, the Philistines were attacking um, Israel. Yes. And the Bible says that the Philistines came in Bethlehem, Judah, which means the the, the 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 enemy was at Israel's doorstep. Yes, yes. It was no longer on the mountains. It was no longer far. It was at the very own doorstep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we only wake up when things are at our doorstep. Yeah. When I realize my child is on drugs, or I realize that my daughter is pregnant, or something has happened. When things are now, we be, we we woken up and we want to now wake everybody else in the community up because it's now at my doorstep. But when it was at your doorstep, uh, when it was not at your doorstep, you were okay. You were you were fine with, with everything that was happening. But now you're waking up because now it's because rocking it's your boat, yeah. it's shaking your your house. It's sh so I think we need to get to a place where we wake up sooner than later. Whether it is at your doorstep, whether, whether it's it your, at someone else's doorstep, yeah. we go yeah. back to it takes a village to raise. It a takes child. a village because things you see things, disaster or pain doesn't happen overnight it's a progress we look in Genesis there was a serpent yes. it was known as a serpent in revelations it was known as a dragon yes. between the serpent and the dragon what happened yeah. there was a lot of things that happened mm -hmm. and sometimes in our in our society there are certain things that are as small as serpents that we ignore and now that it becomes a dragon it becomes a monster in society now we want to wake up let's not wake up when things are at its worst Let's start waking up when it is early sure. and deal with it. So, Bishop, you know, and in this as well, there's a passage where you're speaking about how do we deal with the dying generation. I'm, I'm mentioning this because, you know, some of, the, some of the leaders, some of the elderly people in our community, especially in this day and age, I hear a whole lot of um, elderly people saying, because they're on another level. <coughs> that is what the, the elderly people are saying. So with them being with them saying that it's an automatic they have turned their backs on the children up, already. Yeah. They, they gave up. up on the children. They gave up. It's like Niman cannot make a party because I can I'll rather deal with my child in the house. Or sometimes it is so bad that you can also not even deal with your own child in the house because it already it's yeah. such a big yeah. problem already. Yeah. In your insights, you, you speak about how we should deal with the dying generation. Yeah. Can you maybe just take us through that as well? Okay. Sure. Uh, I might divert from that. Yes. Uh, because something just came to my mind as well. Um, they, like I said early on, sometimes there comes a stage in your life where a child has grown beyond your, your voice. voice. Yes. And it is important to identify... Because you'll find that mm -hmm. when your child grows beyond your voice, there's somebody that this person is connecting to. to. Yes. So the best thing that I need to identify is who is the current voice that is speaking to, that's speaking to my child. Sure. And if I can relate to that current voice speaking to my child, I mean, if it's a good one, if it's a good one, yeah. I relate to that person. Mm -hmm. I can indirectly speak to my child through that voice yes by developing that relationship i know my dad how my dad used to speak through me was through my friends mm. because my dad became my friend's mentor mm. leader i mean i look at people like pastor ron in them they would come to my house and they would sit and if i was if i was naughty he would relate to my friends and he would maybe just speak and th through that they would help correct me mm -hmm. because they now 
want my voice. Yes, yes. There were the people that were speaking to me. Mm -hmm. And and the, the, the if we can identify voices, like sometimes the voice would be a youth leader, it could be a church member, it could be it could be a, a community member, mm -hmm. it could be a sporting a coach. Yes, yes. Identify those people mm -hmm. and work with them. Not dump them with problems. Yes. But just relate to them so that they could become that voice that speaks. And they can enhance your voice in the, the lives of, the, of, of your children. Yes, Bishop, I'm asking, I ask that because, you know, so many times our, our community gives up on the children yes. in the community. Yes. And the saddest yes. thing is to see that happening right in front of your eyes where one must actually go that far by saying, but you are a parent. Yeah. You cannot allow someone else's child to do something wrong in front yeah. of you. Yeah. Because that is how far it's gone. Yeah. Parents is allowing children to do wrong in front of them because that is mm -hmm. So I'll rather step yeah. away. They even go that far by saying, mm, because, bang, I can't I can't yeah. because sometimes the us as parents is also the problem yeah. because the when I correct your child in the street, yeah. now you don't come and say thank you for correcting yeah. your child. Now you come and you yeah. fight with me because I corrected your yeah. child. Yeah. Also going back to how the pink lounge started, it's, I got to realize that you know what, speaking to the smaller children does not necessarily only love. Mm -hmm. We need to now dig deeper because the can can come and it's come here, but this child is going back to the very same house yeah. where there is a problem. Absolutely. How are we going to relate to the, to the mother? How are we going to relate to the father? And help everyone in our mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. so that things can become mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And just like you are saying that, Bishop, um, we need to reach out we need to look for a voice right. they can speak yeah. to our children yeah. in order for me to also be able to speak to my child yeah. finding out what is the problem where is it yeah. and then also bishop another thing that comes to mind is looking at communication i think there's also a gap with, with communication between our children and our parents <laughs> Um, what do you think about um, it? Uh, yeah. Amazingly, um, let's 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 look at communication. If you look at the way my girls, I've got a I've got a four, six, and an eight. The kind of topics they speak to me now, it's not the kind of topics I would speak back to yes. back then with my parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are the stage of speaking about boyfriend and dating and you know all those things, <laughs> and th those are not the con kind of conversation. So what we must understand is that. Society has evolved. Yes. Things has, has, has moved on. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, at this stage, I want to say to the parents, yes. you cannot ha keep your child hidden from a, a lot of things. Yes. Because technology has exposed mm -hmm. it. Uh, society has exposed yes. it. You need to, as a parent, you need to upskill yourself. That when these conversations happen... Heavens. How can you guide that conversation yes. and work through that conversation? Mm -hmm. But sometimes because we are not skilled in that conversation, uh, uh, we try to avoid it and that now sometimes becomes an outcry. The child becomes pregnant because it was not communicated. I'm on drugs because it was not really communicated. And I'm not saying it's because of the result of, 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 of the parents, but if there's no communication and to the parents, if you feel that you are not skilled, then get people who are the support yes, structures. Yes, Bishop. Yes. Get people who are the support structures. Well, like you said, yes, there are some parents at this stage that are not comfortable speaking those things yet. And you, obviously, if a parent is of that staunch, you know, the staunch age group, I can enough no, and sex partner, then get somebody. Get, get somebody to, to do that on your behalf. To become that voice it's not taking your responsibility away from you it's just empowering your child mm -hmm. and it's making your voice even stronger yes because there are so many ideologies and philosophies out there that's bombarding our children they bombard with information yes. i mean years years ago um you would enter into a shop the pornographic books would have been covered with plastic and there would be a picture there will be a thing covering and you wouldn't see anything. Mm. But nowadays the magazines are open. Everywhere. Mm. So the thing is, these things our kids are bombarded with, with, with so much information. Uh, how then do you want to still keep them ignorant from it? Yes. We cannot. All we need to do is we need to have serious conversations with them. Uh, and that's like the art of communication. Uh, if I'm not skilled in that, 
Get somebody else that can do it for you. Can do it for you. But communication needs to happen. Communication needs to happen. Besides, even just day to day, even on your faith, mm -hmm. Christianity. Yes. We're looking at Christianity. It's bomb our kids are bombarded. They don't know how to defend their faith. They don't know how to speak. It's so, because there's no conversations happening. Exactly. And there's no comment. Now you find that now, uh, uh, parents would say because they don't know it, they would say, "Exenia, who come? I'm not at your orders." Yeah. You don't give them an extra you reason. You don't give them a reason. And that's not communication. Mm -hmm. You cannot shut a conversation. Yes. You see. So, they, as a parent, you need to upskill yourself in that, in, that, in that regard. So that everything you say to your children must make sense must to them. Must make sense to them. Yeah. Yes. So, Bishop, with that being said, can you give words of encouragement to our young people that's currently in a dying state? Currently in a state of they don't know whether they're coming or going. They don't know what is their purpose. They don't know where they're heading to. And they also don't know what they want to do with themselves as a whole. Right. Um, to every youngster that might be hearing my voice, the Bible says, train up a child in the way of the Lord and the way he should go, mm -hmm. not the way he wants to go. Yeah. There are ways that our young people want to, to go. go. There are ways that you want to go. But we as parents and the greater body, the society, our responsibility is to train you in the way you should go. Because there's a plan that God has for your life. Yes. But also there's a plan that the enemy has for your life. And we identify the plan of the enemy for your life, but we want to train you in the way you should go. What you need to do is that you need to get to a place where you associate with people that will bring value to you. Mm -hmm. Like I said to the to the school, uh, to the students last week, uh, it was a bit of a tedious task because I had to calm them down. Um, the first thing you need to do for you to become a success is that you need to associate with people that will speak value into, into your, your life. life. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself the question, those who I'm associating with, are they adding value to me or are they removing value from yes. me or are they devaluing me? Yes. Proverbs 13, 20 says, he that walks with the wise will become wise. Yes. So for me to be wise, I need to walk with people that will speak wisdom into my life. Mm -hmm. Number two, I need people that also has the similar kind of passion that I have. Yes, yes. Um, passion in terms of bettering our lives. Mm -hmm. um, not... Uh, 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 we, we, I was at school when it was, when it was, it was Monday, last Tuesday, Thursday. last week, last week, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And um, before I began my session, there was tremendous chaos. Chaos. I think for it took me about a half an hour to, to calm the situation down. And then I said, but I, I told the educators, we're not going to stop them from so those that are talking let them continue talking mm -hmm. i only want to address those who's got purpose yes and those who have purpose eventually listen to my voice so what i'm saying to the young people is that those people that correct you don't see them as your enemies mm -hmm. i think this is the mistake Still, our our, yes. our young people make mm -hmm. is that when people correct us we think that these people don't want us to have fun. Yes. These people don't want us to better our lives. Mm -hmm. the, the ones who are correcting are the ones that's actually seeing value in you. Most definitely, yes. Because those who are not correcting you will leave you at your own wounds, at your own ways. And then when things go bad for you, they are not there to pick you up. But the ones who are correcting you, they are seeing value. They are seeing purpose in you. And they are helping you develop the purpose. So two things I want you to do is find people that mm -hmm. add value to do add value to you and two listen to the people that are correcting you because they are adding value to you yeah wow. i love that bishop especially the adding value yeah. and understanding your purpose understanding your because purpose. that is the ultimate aim that we need to sort for yeah because the word of god says that he, the lord has a plan and a purpose yeah. for our lives and, and you see the thing is also why why that is is because there's a lack of understanding what is purpose. Yes. We hear people say everywhere, we are, you must understand your purpose, understand mm -hmm. your purpose, understand your purpose. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to 
do as people before we even uh, tell them that they must follow their purpose we need to hear from them what is their understanding of purpose because sometimes what we are offering them is not what they see as purpose. Mm -hmm. Like I say, when you look at a lot of people, uh, young people, the things they pursue is just the material things. Yes, most definitely. And they see that as purpose. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's a, this is a generation that they see material things as purpose. And when they don't have that, they don't see value within themselves. Mm -hmm. And if we can get to the place where we can make them understand their purpose. That's why you find some young people are not going to school. I've heard some young people, I can't go to school because I don't have the kind of shoes that my friends have. Mm. You are prepared to lose your education for shoes. for shoes. You are prepared to do this for shoes or or, or you don't have the lunch. I know my girl, my girls, uh, Mireille told me the one day, I'm not gonna go to school if I'm gonna have bread and peanut butter. <laughs> I don't tell myself, is this really what is it boiled down to? It's because our young people don't understand purpose. And the yes. mistake we are doing, we are telling them, follow your purpose, follow it, but we are not clearly hearing from them. What do you understand what purpose is? Because we can't give them purpose. Mm -hmm. They need to understand what purpose. And when they understand what purpose is, they will pursue it. Because our young people, let's be honest, our young people has got the energy, they've got the power, and they are pursuing things. You look at drugs, they pursue drugs. Yes. They pursue what, whatever they love, they pursue. Mm. Now, and whatever they understand, they pursue. So if we can make them understand purpose, yes, they, they will pursue. automatically yes. pursue that. I love that one, Bishop. We're ending on a good note. <laughs> I like that because... That is where what we ultimately needs to need to get our generate the, the young generation to understand their purpose. Right. And and work from there. I think it's one of the answers to get our generation away from right. crime. Right. Is to make them understand that they have purpose and also let them tell us what is purpose and then also work it out Absolutely. for them. In Absolutely. order for them to understand Absolutely. where they should head yeah. to and get understanding from. Just to add, uh, um, when when we do counseling. Uh, especially the safe house one of the first questions I ask and you see like in most cases what most counselors do we want to tell people what to do mm. but I sit with the people and I ask you what is your plan mm. um, if you say you want to change mm. then, then we ask what does change look like to you mm. and once they give it to us um, also, why do we do that? It's to check their level of understanding yes, of sure. where they are, what they should do, and what they should become. Because sometimes we assume that kids know what to do. Yes, yes, for sure. We assume that. Uh, it's Even in their spiritual life, uh, just because a child is born in a Christian home, we assume this, this child knows the things of God. So we need to engage with them by throwing questions so that... But, when they speak to us, we can gauge on which level they are so that we know how to come in. Mm -hmm. But sometimes as, 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 as parents or people that are speaking, we are always dumping on them information. Yes, but yes, with sure. this generation, we cannot dump inf information. It's all about having us have that interacting. one interacting mm -hmm. conversation with them, where they share with us what they understand, and we then know how we can come in to connect with them. I love what you mentioned, Bishop. It takes me back of the, of the of a course that I've done, the life coaching course, where it says when you speak to someone, you don't ask why questions, you ask the how questions. Right. And it's just what right. you are saying. How are you going to do this? Right. How do you see yourself in a few years? Right. How do you right. want yourself, how do you want to speak? How do you want to carry yourself? You know, right. that type of things. So that you must have do that introspection by saying, this is how I want to right. do it. And then the guidance will come and say, Absolutely. okay, if you're going to do it that way, then you must do this. And then you must try and do that in order for you to get there. Absolutely. And also by them giving it to us and us not telling them, mm. it's also giving them a sense of responsibility. Yes. Because if we are just giving to them, this is what we require of them. They will get to a stage where they will satisfy us, mm -hmm. yes, until they grow older and they feel now, I, now I can do my own thing because I've been satisfying you. But if you can have them live out their life being guided, then they will know that I've been living out my life. 
I, I haven't just been pleasing my parents. Yes. It's myself. It's, it's my. Myself. It's my decision. Yes. Where I'm going to, it's my decision. My decision. It's what I've said, so that we we are just simply there as a support structure. So in closing, Bishop, can you know you've you've given the the, the youth the, the encouragement for the for the parents that that the possessed man who's now been healed. Right. The bleeding woman has been through a healing process as well. What advice or what word of encouragement can you give to them? Beautiful. When it comes to working with our generation, the, our younger generation. Jesus raised up the daughter, mm -hmm. uh, Jairus's daughter, after he brought yes. everybody in, mm -hmm. and. He looked to the parents and he told the parents, you feed them. Mm. That word feed means to nurture, mm. to take care. Mm. I want to make it clear to the parents. The support structures are not there to take your responsibility yes. away from you. Mm -hmm. Don't feel intimidated by yes. the support structures. Yes. We are just there to enhance your voice. So it is your responsibility to feed your child. Mm -hmm. But then you can only feed what you have. Yes. There are three areas that a parent should feed, should be able to feed the child. Why? Because a person is a three-part being. Number one, you feed the child emotionally. Yes. Right. There's that emotional aspect. There's that love. There's that caring. There's that a child needs to come into a home where there's a sense of love. And, and the best way, even for men, the best way to love your child is to love the child's mother because children love it I you know I look at my girls when uh, pastor came myself when we hug and we show affection toward each other there's a level of excitement mm -hmm. in the children's life yes. so even with elderly children when they see there's that love and the bond between mm -hmm. husband and wife mm -hmm. now that they are healed yes. and they see that bond it then gives the kids a level of confidence oh, yes. That's how you feed them. Yes, That's how you feed them with the emotion. Because now they learn what love is. Then you need to feed them spiritually. Mm -hmm. the, problem with, with, the problem with our parental generation is that we leave the spiritual part up to our kids. Mm. We do everything else. We take them to school. We do everything. But when it comes to the things of God, we leave it up to them. Kids, or really anybody by nature, won't pursue the things of God generally. No, yes. Mm. Why? Because the things of God is literally not, let me be honest, it's not nice. The commands that God gives, mm. the, 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 the repentance, it's not a nice thing. I've heard people say, hey, I will yesterday I don't for because yeah. they realize there's a level of responsibility. Yeah, they, mm. So it's not easy for the young people just to get into the things of God. Mm. But they still need to be taught. Yes. They need to be guided in that area. Make it a point that you feed them spiritually. And how you feed them spiritually is by you as well as a parent showing your activeness in your spiritual life as yes. well. Because like you said early on, kids learn not by what you tell them, but how. They want to see the worshiper yes. in you. They want to see the, the one who reads the word of mm -hmm. God. And by doing that, I my very first book that I read, my very first book I read was my dad's Bible. Because mm -hmm. I saw my dad enjoy his Bible. Yes. And that was the book I always want. I would take that Bible and I would put it in my bag and I would take it to school. Because that was something, because I saw my dad enjoying that. Yes. So whatever you do, that's how you feed them. That, so it's, it's spiritually, it's phys emotionally, emotionally, and also physically. Obviously, the physical part, we are doing well. We buy them the Nikes, we buy them the... the, 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 the we do that extremely yes. well. But I think the emotional part and the spiritual part, we need to be more intentional as far as that is concerned. Thank you, Bishop. So to our parents, we need to be more intentional. To our younger generation, let us feed our children emotionally, spiritually and physically so thank you very much bishop for today's session it's an honor. um I'm, I'm so excited for this session because we're not going to have yeah, um adults here beautiful we're not going to have people who's beautiful. been through it all we're going to speak to the child Absolutely. we're going to hear from the younger people as to what it is that they understand what life is all That's about it. and how they see this life as it is and i'm excited bishop because you know we, we need to know what is their understanding, mm -hmm. like we've just spoken mm -hmm. about now. We need to know what is their understanding, what is it that they are thinking. Mm -hmm. 
life should be about mm -hmm. do they understand mm -hmm. purpose mm -hmm. do they understand the plan and the purpose that god has for their lives mm -hmm. do they know what identity is so i'm so excited for this session for the series bishop because now also our parents i'm praying that our parents will open their ears and listen to our Absolutely. children listen to what it Absolutely. is that's going on in their minds yeah. what it is that they are thinking yeah. and what is it that they are feeling yeah. Yeah. as children can i can i say this when they listen to this they mustn't only listen to what they are saying yes listen to what they are not saying yes because sometimes there are things that they are not saying that speaks louder than the things they are, they are saying. saying so yeah so thank you very much bishop thank you very much um we've come to the end of our session um tune into the pink lounge every sunday five o'clock um also follow our facebook uh, our social media pages Facebook, um, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Thank you very much. God bless.